Multi-column statistics are statistics that are created whenever you create an index that has multiple key columns. Chances are you've got some of these statistics in your environment right now because I'm guessing you probably have indexes that have more than one key column. We're going to take a look at how these multi-column stats are calculated and how the old CE and the new CE differ in how they handle them. Let's start with the old cardinality estimator. First thing we'll do is create the index ix post, post type ID, last editor user ID. And we'll set it up so that the leading column in this index is post type ID, followed by last editor user ID, and then we'll include the ID column. When we do this, we'll automatically create statistics for that index. We'll run our query get the execution plan and the estimated number of rows, and we'll see that the number of rows is 26.0313. Now that we wanted to reverse engineer this number, where do we need to go? That's right, we need to go find the name of the stat that we created when we created the index. So we run our big query, and here are our results. There's the name of the statistic. Now let's go run that's right, DBCC shows statistics and see what kind of numbers we get back. You'll notice something a little bit different about DBCC show statistics this time. We actually get two rows in the density vector. It used to be that we'd just get the one, but now we're getting two. The only row that SQL Server will touch is the last row. There's really no use for any of the preceding steps. They're kind of fun information to look at, but SQL Server really has no use for them. Now it's at this point that the old cardinality estimator gets curiously lazy. It sees that there are two columns involved and thinks to itself, two columns? That sounds like a lot of work. <sighs> Maybe we'll just Go with the all density and call it good. It takes the all density number and multiplies it by the number of rows. And really it's as simple as that. It's not working very hard, is it? It's probably not even a good estimate, but that's how the old cardinality estimator did it. Now let's flip over to the new CE and see what happens. We'll run our same query. We do that and we see that our new estimate is 3,569.94. Now we don't have to run the big query to get the name. To get the statistics, we can go straight back to DBCC show statistics because none of that has changed since we looked at it with the old CE. The new cardinality estimator will actually start digging through the histogram. Since the post type ID is the leading index column, when we go to the statistics for that index, we'll see that the histogram data have to do with post type ID. If we look at the range high key, those values are going to match what we have in the post type ID column. We'll look down in the histogram for our post type ID equals two in the range high key. We've got it here in the range high key, we know there's a match, so we'll go over to EQ rows and pull that 1.02 times 10 to the seventh value. Next, we need to go to the individual statistic for last editor user ID. This is the next column in the list of index columns. We go to the histogram, find the range high key. If it matches, then we're in good shape. We'll grab the EQ rows. It does match in this case. We'll grab the 4449.853. Now that we've accounted for each column in the formula, we'll go back and figure out how that formula is going to be assembled. The formula for devising the estimate is just like what we did with multiple single column statistics. We'll order these from most selective to least selective. In this case, the last editor user ID number is the most selective. So that will go at the front and we'll use the number of rows reported by the histogram. For post type ID, since we only have two columns, that is our obviously next most selective column, we'll take 
the number of rows reported by the histogram, divide it by the total number of rows in that statistic, and then take the square root of that result. 4449.853 times the square root of 0.643 gives us our estimate, 3,569.94. So, wait a minute. If we put post type ID as the leading column in our index, but the cardinality estimator uses last editor user ID as the leading column in its formula, does that mean that the order of columns in our index doesn't matter? Uh, well, yes and no. Here's why the index column order does matter with these multi-column stats. The first column listed in the index, and therefore in the index statistic, is the one that the histogram applies to. So with last editor user ID, when we look at the index stat, we get the histogram that applies to those last editor user ID values. Every subsequent column in the index, we use the individual stats histogram. So after looking up last editor user ID in the index stat, we then go to the individual stat for post type ID. If post type ID were the first column in the index, then the histogram we get from the index stat would apply to post type ID. Furthermore, looking at the last editor user ID histogram for the index and looking at the individual stat for last editor user ID, it's unlikely that those two histograms are going to match. Where the order of your index columns doesn't matter is where the estimator is arranging columns in order to do its calculation. Remember that the new estimator likes to put columns in order from most selective to least selective when putting its formula together. It doesn't really matter that post type ID is the first column in the index. If it's not the most selective, it won't be the first column in the formula. So in this case, last editor user ID being more selective gets the starting position. From there, we do the square root of column B. If there's a third column, square root, square root of column C. If there's a fourth column, square root, square root, square root of column D. If there are five or more columns, it pretty much gives up at that point. The reason being, as you take the square root of a number between zero and one, as you keep taking the square root of it, it has an asymptote that eventually caps out at one. So there's really not much point in trying to get more and more and more and more and more selective about it. The optimizer just says, you know what, four is plenty. What happens if we flip the order of the fields so that last editor user ID is now the leading column in our index and post type ID falls behind that? To flip the index around, we're going to drop the old index and create a new one, only this time the index will have the name that specifies that last editor user ID comes first and we'll also put the last editor user ID column first. We'll put the post type ID second and still keep the include of the ID column. When we run our stats list query, we see the new index is there and there are two statistics for it. If we run our base query again against the old cardinality estimator, it's the same result. We already know that it's going to be lazy and use all density. Let's try running this with the new cardinality estimator. Oh, this is different. Okay, so this is a slightly different number than what we got before. This time it's 3947.45. What's that about? To find out, we'll reverse engineer our numbers again. We already know the name of the index and the stats, so let's just go straight to DBCC show statistics. And because we're looking at last editor user ID as the leading column, we get a histogram that applies to last editor user ID. Recall that before, our histogram showed us the post type ID values. This time we get last editor user ID. And in the EQ rows, because we're matching the range high key with our predicate, we get 4926. From here, the cardinality estimator goes to the individual stat on the second column. This time it's post type ID. We find the range high key, we get a match with EQ rows, 
And then this time we take the 4926 estimate, multiply it by the square root of 64.4%, and there's our 3947.45. Once again, our estimator has come up with a number that is in the 3900 range, whether it's last editor user ID in front or post type ID in front. It doesn't seem to be much difference. We've learned that the leading column in your index actually does make a difference. Even though the new cardinality estimator won't take that order of index columns into account when it creates the formula to calculate the estimate, it will return different values in the histogram based on that leading column. Another thing we've learned is that the old cardinality estimator just can't really be bothered to go histogram deep when calculating the estimated number of rows for a multi-column stat for an index statistic. It'll just give up and go to the all density number instead. We've also learned that the new cardinality estimator will use the histogram and apply that same assumption of correlation when it puts together its formula for the estimated number of rows. So if you're scoring at home or if you're alone, Here's where we are in terms of the new versus the old cardinality estimator. The first statistic that we looked at was a single column, one that was auto-created for last editor user ID. The old and the new estimators both behave the same way, and they were pretty close to the actual, so we'll call that a tie. Next, we looked at multiple single columns, and for this, we had a 2857 estimate for the old cardinality estimator and 356589 for the new. The actual number of rows was 1116, so both estimators overbid, but the old estimator was at least closer. Moving on, we went into multi-column statistics, stats that are created when an index gets created. The first go around, we did post type ID as a leading column, last editor user ID, as the following column. The old estimator guessed 26 rows, the new estimator 3,569 rows. The actual was still 1,116. But given that we want SQL Server, if anything, to overshoot a little bit in terms of the number of rows it expects to get back, we prefer the new estimator's number. Flipping the columns around, we did last editor user ID followed by post type ID. Again, the old estimator said 26 rows. The new estimator came up with a slightly different number, 3947, and the actual was still 1116. For the same reasons that we liked the post type ID, last editor, user ID index from the new estimator, we also like it here in the reverse order. Coming up, we'll look at what happens with filtered statistics, as well as a phenomenon called the ascending key problem, something that has plagued the old estimator for many, many years.